you're going uh, from here and up to uh, this big waterfall, then you will be going back. So you're on a one and a half hour. So when that is done, you put on the rest of the suit, you zip it up, and you have a nice high collar here. Make sure it's standing and it's outside of the suit so your neck doesn't get cold. <laughs> Hello so guys, my name is Ty. I'm going to be your boat driver and guide today. Yeah. Um, you can Fliegende means to fly, and Foss means waterfall, so it gets the name the flying waterfall. And it's kind of starting to do it now, uh, but with a little bit more snow melt and or rain, uh, the pressure in the river will be so much that it will come flying off the top of the mountain with so much force that it won't actually touch any of the rocks in between, it will go all the way out into the fjord. Now at the time that it does this, flying off the mountain into the fjord. And it's even been seen to throw things as big as trees and rocks and things like that out into the fjord. So when it's doing that, we stay a little bit further away. But right now, it's uh, got plenty of water in it. A lot of these big waterfalls as well, so like this one and many of them you'll see, they run all year round. So and in the whole area, there is about 1,700 people living. And in Orland itself is 1,200 people. How do so, they make a living? And so a lot of people in Orland have uh, something to do with those and they provide electricity for the whole Orland County about 30-40% of uh, Oslo as well and then even some of Central Europe So back down in that valley in Orland, Stalin is one of the biggest producers of uh, hydroelectricity in Europe happy to just be left on their own uh, and the things we get from the goat of course is the meat and the milk and so these small have villages heard of, the heard of the brown cheese yet? I no. Have, no I okay have first right. time so I may have eaten it without knowing I ate it but I don't think so <laughs> no I think it's pretty it sticks out in your memory for sure so in the story it'll say uh, Brun Ost is the is the brown cheese um, and it's made from the whey so when you make cheese you know you have the milk you add an enzyme to the milk that separates it into curd, which is the white cheese, and whey. Most bit places throw the whey away. Uh. <laughs> um, but here in these remote villages, they try and use everything from they can from the animal. So they would take the whey, they would add some cream, and then they mm. cook it for a really long time, like eight hours or something, and uh, caramelize it. So it's caramelized whey. Wow. That's what the brown cheese is, and it's a very sweet 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 right? sweet strong flavor this is the mistake people usually make when they try it is uh they see ah oh, brown cheese it's a type of cheese i expect cheese and you eat it oh no it does not taste like cheese. 10 years it's old it's made of wood it is yes uh, it's made of wood its uh, primary structure is the staves you know the big uh, wooden pillars uh -huh. 
Um, and it, they wound up redoing the outside, but inside still has a lot of its original artworks and sculptures and things that are around from when it was built around 1147. So it's also pretty interesting to come and see that. Yeah, pretty cute. A very cute little village. settlement there and it was one of the most successful Viking settlements in the area and this is part of where the name of Nardo Fjord comes from as well. People were starting to come to the area and settle down here making farms and towns and villages and things like this but they were doing often what people do they were destroying the nature a bit cutting down all the forest to make the fields and polluting the rivers and hunting all the animals and things like this and this is the kinds of things that make a troll quite angry mm -hmm. and the troll that lived here was a very very large troll and one long winter night after he'd got sick of all this he uh, chases all the people away he takes out his hammer and chisel and starts digging. And he digs all the farms and all the villages and all the roads and everything the people had made. And he digs all the way out to the ocean and gets to the ocean. And of course it comes flooding in and fills in these valleys that he's dug with his hammer and chisel. But being such a big job for the troll, he's exhausted and uh, he would usually go back to his cave to sleep. But he just fell asleep right where he was his hands stuck like this from holding his hammer and chisel and he fell asleep with his head on his arm and the sun came up and now do you know what happens to a troll when they're touched by the sunlight they turn to stone if they're mm. caught in the sunshine oh. so the troll was turned to stone and now if you look at my hands like this and the gaps in my fingers here and the ridge of my knuckles here uh -huh. You can uh, still see the hands of the troll. They're sitting right over there. These two hands ah. here. So there, there, there uh, lies the troll that uh, dug Sognafjord. Ah. So uh, when someone says glaciers, you know that you can uh, tell them the real story. I believe that one. Yeah. I mean, the evidence is right yeah, there, right? Big troll right there. Yeah. Don't see any glaciers anywhere, but I see a troll. <laughs> The Disney team came all over Norway looking for Arendelle and they settled on mostly using Unredal. And you can, you know, kind of see why. 